first, we're just going to tell you about who we are as an organization. Um, founded in 2008, uh, 2015, we sold or helped 356 families, uh, 2016, 444, 43 families, last year, 650 families, and we just completed our 500th family helped uh, last week um, as far as, as a whole. So uh, our main goal as anybody is to stretch individuals beyond potential that they never thought possible, creating a culture, see I just typed this, so I apologize, I just noticed that I made that mistake, <laughs> creating a culture of productivity, loyalty, support, and collaboration. But this mostly is about launching your guys' business, how to take your individual business from where it is right now to where you want it to be in the future. So just out of ask of questions, Long, how long you guys been in the business? Anyone been in the, uh, a lot of people, new agents? New agents? New, 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 new. Anyone over three, four, five years? Three, four, five years, so try to maintain. So this is gonna be stuff that you can apply to your business. Actions that get you to where you would like to be. Our main goal is to make people productive. Same thing we're gonna apply to this is how do you get you guys to where you wanna be. Uh, wanna be. So you must establish your blueprint. One of the things that I think every agent that I talk to as I, I work with our team, we get into it for a couple of different reasons. One is money. We love to make money, right? Real estate agents, we sold 450 houses last year. I'm a millionaire, right? Real quick, doesn't work like that. But a lot of people get into it for money. Uh, if you're a little bit like me, get into it for freedom. No nine to five. I can come and go as I please. I get no boss, right? I can do whatever I want, what I want, how I want it, when I want to. One problem with that is you end up doing a lot of nothing, right? That's I, I found that out a little bit the hard way. But you, uh, you want some money, maybe you'll spend a lot. You want some freedom, you might work seven days a week, 24-7 on your client schedule because they cl call you on holidays, weekends. I got a person call me at 10.30 last night. I'm like, I ain't answering the phone. Like, that ain't happening. Smaller percentage of people get into real estate for power. Conquer the real estate universe. I want to be known everywhere. I'm in here for power, right? So what kind of blueprint is that? Well, we have a very basic blueprint, which you guys have probably heard about a lot. You probably had some of these brought up today if you were at some of the classes. Setting your goals, right? And this is for as an agent. If you're bigger production style, if you want to be a team leader, run your own organization, setting your goals. What do you actually want to accomplish? Is that a transactional goal? Is that a monetary goal? Something that I don't think really anybody does. I bet you 95% of people that get into real estate don't even do number two. Write out a business plan. What are the actions that we are going to take day by day, time block by time block, in order to make us more productive? Choosing your lead generation sort uh, activities. Now, Studying nationally, I'm a part of the Tom Ferry organization. If you've never heard of Tom Ferry, he does coaching. Um, we do Tom Ferry and Brian Buffini within our team. The average agent has one lead generation activity. One. Most of the time, friends and family. Please refer me business. That's the main way they go out of it. If you want to survive, we have known statistics that you need four. You need four ways of generating activities, leads for you. Now, there's lots of ways you can generate leads. 115 different ways you can find someone to work with. What are your four that you're gonna focus on? During that as well, knowing your numbers. This goes back to a lot of different things. Something that I think a lot of agents, if I implored you to do anything, if I implored you to do anything, know your numbers. So I'll stop and go a little bit off script for this in a second. Me getting into real estate, this is year five and a half going into six for me, okay? It is a hard business, right? 75% of people don't make year three. It's a high failure rate. I did not, was not born here, was not raised here, knew no people when I got into real estate, so that whole friends and family aspect did not exist for me when I tried to get into it. I worked in hotels prior, so everyone that works in hotels, do you knew this? For one, they make tips, so they don't, they don't buy houses, and they're transient, so they move all the time. So any of my friends were not buying houses. So how did I actually get to doing what I do today? I had no way of generating leads, so I got this big list for sale by owners, and I called it consistently for about 355, 60 days in a row, and I finally got five, six, seven transactions. But what I figured out, knowing my numbers, 
is that for every 41 conversations that I had on for sale buyers, I get an appointment. And for every two appointments I went on, I closed one deal, or I'd actually get the listing. I did that 82, 82 conversations would get me to where I need to be, which is get me to a closing. I have an office right over here. I have this hammer that I used to walk around with because you stay in your office. And the quote that I got into it, and Justin and Brogan have both heard this is, if you have a good hammer, everything looks like nails, which is a sales quote. But I knew that if I kept working through this, I'd get another notch on my hammer, which is another listing, another closing. So knowing your numbers, how many conversations do you have to have in order to get an appointment. Now, we talk about lead generation, we talk about a lot of different stuff, but getting on appointments, going and have a conversation with someone that's actually interested in buying, selling real estate will be your number one thing. Knowing my numbers, is goes right into the, the, uh, number five, which is tracking your results. You can do a lot of different things, 100 different things, but if you don't know where it's going, then what's the point? If you don't know where it came from, what's the point? And the last one goes into the other two, using a CRM. Um, our organization uses Boomtown. It's provided here by My Home Group. We'd recommend it, but the best CRM that you guys are gonna use, whoa, hold on. Best CRM that you're gonna use is the one that you will use. It doesn't matter what you put it on as long as you make it consistent and actually put it into action, okay? So there are some pitfalls to working in real estate. You won't prospect. This is some things that just happen for you that the reason why you'd be one of the 75%. You won't prospect. You won't actually step out of your comfort zone and go and talk to people, ask people the question of if you're looking to buy or sell real estate. I think that's one of the a lot of things that we all do is we get in our own heads. I don't want to make that phone call. I don't want to ask my friend if he's looking to buy or sell. I stand in an interesting thing as practicing. I can turn any conversation into a real estate conversation. Every one of you is involved in real estate, whether or not you're a real estate agent or not. You're renting, you're buying, some of your families, you're actively involved in real estate, and so is every single one of the people that you'll ever have a conversation with. The key part of that is actually getting to the point where you can understand the right questions to ask and actually get to the point of prospecting to know, hey, in two years, this person might be willing to buy. Or in three years, this person is going to be looking to sell. Get that into your CRM, document it, and move forward. Hardest part right here. You won't follow up. Doesn't matter how many dollars you spend on lead generation. We get 1,500 leads on our, on our team. 1,500. If no one calls that person back, you ain't. I don't know how many leads I've gotten in my life. But I've thrown thousands of dollars away on them. Because I didn't call them more than one time. The average agent calls a lead one time. Stats show it takes seven touches, seven touches in order to actually book an appointment with someone. And that's off any lead source, doesn't matter what it is. If you generate them from an open house, online lead gen, you have to be able to talk to them seven times. A couple great ways, tips, I'll even give you one right now that I think that's really useful. You have a 300% more likelihood of booking an appointment with someone that you just met by sending them a video text right afterwards. If you've never done it, step out of your comfort zone, you work an open house, you meet someone, after you leave your open house, film yourself real quick. Hey, Justin, it's Nick, really appreciate you coming to the open house today. I know you weren't looking to buy or sell today, but if I could be a real estate resource for you, I'd love to work with you. Here's my cell phone again, let me know. Send that video to them, the likelihood of them opening that video, about 95%. If it's under 30 seconds, the likelihood of them watching the whole thing, 75%. Then 300 times more likelihood of them working with you in the future than they would if you just randomly sent them an email, sent them a random text or whatever. Put yourself out there and remember, the key objective is to separate yourself from everybody else. You'll let one bad experience throw you into a downward spiral. Now this is huge, as Steven says it on here. Humans, we like drama. Some people like it more than others. Um, but especially in this industry, you are a lot of times 100% commission based. You will work hard, there's no average salary, there's no, you come in, you work hard and make this happen. There's a lot of times you'll get a listing, it won't sell. You'll let that one bad experience deter you from the daily activities that you're supposed to be doing on a regular basis. Another thing that I also say is that you'll let 
Even a good experience deter you. I got a listing. I'm going to spend all my days next two weeks in a row working on that one listing. And we miss out on the key number one, which is prospecting. Number four, you'll, we'll keep making the same mistakes over and over again. This is something that we can talk about a little bit later, but knowing mistakes, knowing what you did wrong, listening to some colleagues, listening to great people like Mark that have been in the industry for a long time, they'll tell you a lot of things that they've done wrong. So putting those notes in your back pocket, actually taking those to, to fruition and not making those same mistakes will be key. And your outlook is too short-sighted. Now, twofold for this, the big part of this as well is that in real estate, your real goal is long game. A lot of the people that you're going to talk to is going to be a 12 month lead, 16 month lead, 18 month lead. If you've worked this industry for three or four years, I have leads that are four years old. I've shown houses to for four years and never actually done anything with them. So all about long game. Remember to keep that in mind. Um, we'll get into goal setting here in just a second. Will you be more of the same or will it be something different? There are 53,000 active real estate agents in Phoenix Metro. 53,000. Crazy number, right? Everyone wants to be a real estate agent. Have fun. Uh, everyone thinks it. But are you going to be the same old used car salesman? I don't know if you guys ever heard that statistic, but used car sales and real estate agents battle for uh, top of the chain uh, for people that they hate the most about dealing with used car sales and real estate agents. Who do you want to work with more? Terrible, terrible analogy. I really, really despise it actually. Um, so going into what we're going to talk about today, a little bit of stuff. These are 10 daily questions that we talk about uh, with everybody to help improve your lives, to make sure that you think about your day in the right way. Did you live your life by design yesterday instead of by default or on autopilot? Do you have a schedule? Have you built in the right things to make sure you're successful? Do you have a sweat-breaking workout? I'm a high believer in working out. Um, it will make you feel better about missing out on that opportunity. Um, go hit a punching bag. You lose the listing, spend $5,000 on that. Punching bag will make you feel great. You know, Put that client that took you out on 40 showings and didn't make an offer and ended up winning. There you go. Put their face up, punch it for a while. Did you take 100% responsibility for the passion in your relationships? Interesting thing about real estate, it is just a career job choice. I talk about this with a lot of my people that I work with. I really don't care about thinking about it as monetarily or freedom based. If you're not happy in your own life, then what's the point of doing any of this? How stressed are you about this? How stressed are you about that? Did you take 100% responsibility for the passion in your relationships? Own your life, own your relationships. Did you slow down and connect with your each son, daughter, and be present in their needs? Again, same thing. Are you doing the things that you want to do most? This job is about making money. You can make a million dollars a year. People hear it all the time. This job's about freedom. You can meet and do with time and stuff. But we still hear it. I don't have enough time for this. I don't know I have enough time for that. Connecting with your kids is really, really important. Did you give yourself time? Also extremely important. Taking 20 minutes out of the day, if you're a faithful person, having some prayer time, meditation, however you want to do that, to, I call it wusa, wusa yourself back into a little bit more of a normal state. Um, did you start off your day with a day of gratitude? I do a mantra that I've built over the last couple of years. I say it all the time, every single day, um, because it helps me keep myself aligned with all the things that I really, really want to do for myself. Um, I'll say it to you guys later, I'm not gonna go into it right now. Um, <laughs> but did you manage your wealth and create more of it? working on the things that you need to do each day to build your business. Are you incomplete with anything? Is there anything you need to reach out to? That's disconnecting with family. On my to-do list, it's call and tell my mom I love her every day. Call and tell my brother, hey, what's up, man? You need anything? You got two kids? Just to have that connection with people is super important. Did you make any new contacts yesterday to build your business or yourself? Did you forget something that you're supposed to do? Did you lead, delegate, and inspire the people around you? Are you living life by design, by example, or are you just doing it for fun? Is this, is this for a game or are we doing something for real? Bonus question, did you end the day with appreciation for your life? You are living and everyone in it. No matter how shitty of a day you have, I've called 400 people today, I get no contacts, I got three F offs, I got 20 people who hung up the phone on me. Am I still happy with my life? Probably not, that is a shitty ass day. But are you happy with what you're doing, how hard you're working, and what you're going after work for? 
So I've been saying this analogy, um, and Justin has heard it because I Brogan's heard it too. I said it last week. Um, a Chinese bamboo tree takes five years to grow 90 feet. Five years for a Chinese bamboo tree to grow 90 feet. You have to water it every single day. You have to fertilize it once a week. If you don't water it for three days in a row, it dies in the soil. Okay? It takes four years, 10 months, for that Chinese bamboo tree to break the soil. But after it breaks the soil, it grows 90 feet in eight weeks. So, in your business, are you focusing on today, doing the right things every day? Are you watering, planting seeds, or are you just going to let it die off because you had one bad day? Right? What do you want to see out of yourself in five years? Because it's not about today. It's not about tomorrow. It's about where I want to see myself in 12 months, 24 months, two years, three years, five years, 10 years. Do you have that set out in order in your own life? I mean, just we're talking about it earlier today. I feel sometimes very stressed about my own personal life. I'm trying to build business, trying to grow myself. I have an 11-week-old daughter. I work seven days a week. She does not sleep very well. I actually was with her yesterday, screamed the entire day. I, didn't, I worked on this presentation for a couple hours, but that's all I got done, and I was very nervous about it. But my big goal is in five years, I can take off time when I want to to spend time with her. So what is your long-term goals? Are you watering those every day? Are you going to let little things bother you to not get to your 90 feet? Because if you don't water, it won't grow. I have a couple of inspirational quotes that doesn't matter. Success is never owned. It's rented and you rent as you do every day. Here's some basic stuff that you've all heard. Uh, your attitude, not your aptitude, will determine your altitude. Zig Ziglar, I find that harder I work, the more luck I seem to have. I love that one, Thomas Jefferson. So some major topics of the day we'll talk about. Schedule, time blocking, productivity, practice. Never practice on your clients. Uh, interesting, I bet you, uh, if I ask a raise of hands, how many people have actually practiced working with their clients without actually talking to any clients? It'd probably be, I would say maybe one, but most likely zero um, people that have actually done that. We're going to talk a little bit about education, which I appreciate you guys coming today and working on your education, and then lead generation. Um, in our organization, what we talk about, agents should be working on four main things. Prospecting for clients. I don't care how you do it, but one of those main things you better be doing is looking for more people to work with. Most important thing you're doing in prospecting is booking appointments. Let's grab a coffee, let's grab dinner, let's go out and show you a house. Let me come over and look at your house. Let's do a housing appointment, rental, whatever it is. Here's an interesting thing. Rentals, no one wants to work rentals, right? There's no money in it, right? We always hear that. That's true, there's not. 3% of 12 grand is not a lot of money. But will that renter buy in a year? Or are you willing to put two days of work in to make possibly a $10,000 commission when that person can rent? Are you going to be willing to sacrifice a little bit of your own time because you know you're not going to capitalize on it today for the idea of making a better gain in a year? I know it sucks because I've done lots of rentals, but in order to survive in water, sometimes you have to water things that aren't going to be growing very quickly, right? Um, writing contracts and closing deals are obviously the two most fun things that we love to do. Um, and so we'll get into some of those as well. I think the most important thing that you should do each day is start your day with a powerful morning routine. Sounds cheesy, says it up there, um, but everyone that I've ever heard of that does a lot of business, everyone that I heard of that ever really, really crushes it does, I'd say even crush it is 30 deals a year. If you do 30 deals a year in our markets, $250,000 a year, gross commission. So if you're doing 30 deals a year, they all have morning routines most likely. They come in and do the same things every day. We talked a little bit about it before, is having some kind of prayer time with yourself, aligning your mind right, doing some of the, the basic activities. One of the things that I think is really important is having someone to accountable to. Now, I know you two seem like you might be working together. Is that right? You guys work together or not? Yeah, we do. You do? Somewhat. You, are you married or is your girl, girlfriend you're together or how? I'm just curious. It's complicated. It's complicated. Yeah. I, don't, I don't want you to talk about this. I don't want to talk about the So we're not going to get too deep about this. But accountability. So I'd actually tell you not to do it with each other because that might make it work. But having an accountability partner. Someone says, hey, Nick, are you on your game today? I'm like, no, my game is messed up right now. Uh, but they're able to fire you up, put you back in line, do the things that you need to do. Um, I have three of them currently. 
um, that I talk to every single morning. I'll do my mantra because I make everyone that I work with do a mantra. So my mantra is very simple. Um, I'm dedicated to making a better life for my family and myself. Allow me to focus on the things I can change and not worry about things I cannot. I want to live in the present, remember my past, work hard for my future because I know that I am powerful and I will not lose. I do this every day like 50 times. Because when I make four step by owner calls, that shit sucks. <laughs> like that shit sucks. It's hard, hard, hard work, but I had nothing else I could do. So I'd have someone go F off, someone tell you to go have that sex with your mother, all these different things, I'd say it over again. Oh my God. Uh, that's how it would work. And so I'd do it over and over and over again. And so everyone that I work with, I make them write something to themselves, an application or a mantra to themselves about what they'd like themselves to be. If you listen to mine and broke it down, it applies to every aspect of my life. Always making a better life for me and my family. Live in the present. Remember my past. Work hard for my future. Knowing that no matter what happens to you, no matter how much money you lose, no matter how much money you make, you're still going to be doing the things you want to do, okay? Um, affirmation, but we kind of talked about that. Setting your what are your three most important goals for the day. And I'll touch on this one again. Nutrition and healthy breakfast. I think health is more important than anything. Yes. I don't think I. I love that you agree. Yes. Um, I think if you're not healthy in your life, then what's the point of you even doing anything else? Right? If you're not going to live a long, healthy life, then what's the point? So make sure you keep yourself healthy and nutritional. High and best use of your time. So we talked about this in the beginning. We want to go out. We want to make a lot of money. We want to have some freedom. Some of us want some power. So. You have the freedom to do whatever you want. Your choice today, and I appreciate it. We're spending about 60 minutes with me because I don't think I'm going to go to 90, but we'll see. Um, and I won't expand on the mark unless you guys have thousands of questions. But if you had two hours in your work day, you had two hours, can you be highly productive? What is the highest and best use of your time each day? And if you can block out two hours of your day, I guarantee you, if you blocked out two hours of each of your day, that's, if you did six days a week, it'd give me enough. But if you did 12 hours a week and you did highly productive stuff, you should go 12 days, 12 meals a year. That should be like the minimum. But you have to do the most highly productive things during those two hours. No breaks. How you use your time is the biggest degree of separation. You hear it every day. I don't have enough time. I don't have enough time to do this. I don't have enough time to do that. Somehow we always manage enough time to watch a TV show. <laughs> Or, or maybe get on Facebook a little bit longer. Guilty. Uh, play a Fortnite. I don't know who does. I, I download that game. I think it's super addicting. Um, but less more what matters most. Stuff versus priorities. We have a limited time, energy, and resources. But everyone has 24 hours a day, 1,440 minutes. How are you going to apply that to being most successful? What are the four to five priorities or productivities that you're going to do on a consistent basis? That's going to make you the most money or give you the most freedom or do whatever your goal is that you're going to set at yourself in the beginning. Stuff that's not productive, looks busy, doesn't move the needle. We just throw that to the side. And busyness versus business. I'm going to reorganize my desk. My desk is dirty. I'm going to just go ahead and reorganize that. It takes two hours out of my day. I went home. I was productive today. I reorganized my desk. Highly productive. Analyze your time. Where does it go? So you can track and analyze this. We talked about this. You can analyze your personal schedule, time off, do your vacations, what's your time traps, what blocks you, what actually causes these problems. And this is something that we do think of as a coaching and accountability helps you do. Is if you log it, you'll see where your time goes. Um, interesting, my thing is I have a couple people I work with, and they're always, I don't have enough time during the day. And then I get on their Facebook account, and they're at the gym at like 12:30 in the afternoon. I'm like, I don't mind them being healthy, but they should have done that like in the morning or the night. But I'm like, you were at the gym for two hours the other day. Awesome. But it also probably took you an hour to get there, an hour to go home. So as far as where's your, <laughs> where does it go, is there a way we can reorganize that to make you more productive? The most way to make yourself productive, I guarantee you, and I 100% believe this, is called time blocking. Now, we talked about this. Some of us got into this job for freedom. So time blocking is a nightmare. Like, hey, I'm going to do these things at this time. And so we'll talk about a way to hack this. But if you look at this right here, morning routine, wake up. They do some role playing. At 8 a.m., they're at prospect meeting. At 9 till 10, 15, they're doing a power hour, which is calling people for an hour and 15 minutes. They have a lunch appointment, business development, and client meetings in the afternoon. If you did that every day, that looks pretty highly productive in my mind, right? You're doing some prospecting every day. You have an appointment set for lunch. 
you have a business development meeting, maybe looking at your marketing going on in the afternoon, and you have a client meeting. That's two appointments each day. Okay, so if you went on two appointments, one of those should turn into a deal in the next six months, you would think. So that person should be having a highly productive day. I'll touch on one real quick. I'm gonna go into this in just a second. Role playing. Not the crazy way we're all thinking of in your eyes and sense, but role playing. <laughs> Has anyone ever role played with scripts, practice what they said? We got one. Anyone else? Two, three? Really? We've actually done. How often do you do it? Not very often now. Never? How often? You didn't never? Never done it? Okay. Rogan's done it never. How often do you do it? Ever? Yeah, I, I've really, I've just uh, been, I just brought a guy out not long ago. Okay. So I'm triple prospecting neighborhoods off of this. So I'm really working on that. So working on the, so the script. not practicing on your clients would be key. No, she no. paid for something. Yeah. She paid for something. So if she calls someone, so like this is an interesting way I describe it. So uh, paying for leads, doesn't matter how you get it, Google, pay-per-click, Zillow, Realtor, even doing four sub by owner calls. The funny thing is that costs money, it costs time as well. So a funny story about myself is that I was when I was doing some online lead generation, I had someone call me and uh, I wasn't very, pre well, I hadn't practiced for a little bit, and he called me, he's like, oh, uh, hi, I'm calling about a property at 123 Main Street. I'm like, okay, he's like, I, I'm a cash buyer, I'm really interested in making an offer on this property. I'm like, oh, really? Okay, great. Deal was done right yeah. there, it was over, yeah. like that quick. So role playing, having a little bit of practice in that is key. Now, alternative work schedule, kind of like I said, some of us got this for freedom. You don't want to work that time block schedule. That's not me. I don't want to be like that, going to 8 a.m. till 9 a.m., 9 to 10, 15. I'm not like that. I don't want to be that way. I'm cool with that as long as you're productive, right? So how are you productive if you have no idea what you're going to do each day? Well, i got a hack for you. Very basic one, actually. You ever heard of a to-do, doing, and done board? Anybody, anybody, anybody? No, no not as well. So the key is to this, you could have absolutely infinity one million things on that to-do board. I've got a million things to do today, not enough time to do it, that's okay. Doing, you're allowed to have three. Three things at any one time. I have lots of ideas, tons of ideas. I put them all ideas in there, but I get nothing done. The reason why is because I don't focus on any one thing, I just do everything, and then I complete nothing, right? So, to-do, doing, and done. Infinite on to do. You're only allowed to have three. Some will say five. I say three, especially if you've never done it before and you don't feel like you're very productive. You put three things on your doing board, you're not allowed to have any more until you complete one task. When you're done with it, you move it over to done. Then you can add one more thing off your to do list. You'd be amazed. You'd be absolutely shocked with how much you can get done in one day. Absolutely shocked. You don't like doing sticky notes? Cool with that too. Got a hack for you. It's called Trello. So Trello is a to-do, doing, and done board. You can add it to your phone. It's free. It's an app. Feel free to download it. So one of the ways I like to coach and help people do this is that we put the same damn things on there every day. Call five clients, past clients. Call five future clients. Call five for sale by owners. Call five expires. Check in with every active client. Call your mom. Tell you you love her. Tell your wife you love her. Check in with your brother. Like... Bring your lunch, feed the dog, take the trash out. All of those things are things that you need to do each day. I have, a, I told you I have an 11-week-old daughter, didn't feed my dog two days ago. I felt so bad for Tater when I came back home and I realized his bowl was empty, I hadn't fed him. I was like, shit, All right, that's terrible for him. But having the to-do board like this, you can actually drag it over and move it into doing three things, max of five. If you don't wanna work a time block schedule, do something like this, your productivity level will triple. I would honestly say it would probably go five to 10 times what you'd normally get done in each day. So we were talking about role playing. So we all know who this guy is. Some of you may or may not. It's our boy, Steph Curry. Some of you have seen him do this. She didn't have the volume up in here for me. This is Steph Curry. This is him practicing before a game. He not, he's not even playing, not even playing, but NBA champion, three-time champion. He's dribbling two balls. You don't play with two basketballs. What the hell you do this for? Like, no point. No point in practicing. Wait, why would he try with two balls? Why would he do it this way every single game with no defenders, no nothing? 
because he wants to practice. He wants to be an expert at his craft. So he does two balls, he challenges himself. He pushes himself to be really, really good at what he does. So when he switches to one ball, when he's actually in a game, he wins championships. He wins awards, and he's better than anyone else on the floor. Okay? So I will implore each and every one of you that if you don't do it right now, if you don't do it, have some kind of practice implemented. Yeah, I'm sorry. Let me get this over. Some kind of practice implemented into your daily routine in order to make sure that you are the best that you're going to be when you actually do step onto the court. Everyone thinks the idea of working open houses is terrible these days. Open houses don't create leads. No one likes open houses. I've heard it a lot and a lot more and more and more and more. Yeah. Uh, you love them? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I love it's it. Like them. No. They're, speaking of like, so the interesting thing is people always tell me they're terrible leads that come through. No terrible leads is terrible closers. No such thing. They've never practiced. You're going to walk into an open house and never once have tried how my script and my interaction is going to go with that person that's going to walk in that door. Are you going to smile when they come in? And they're like, hi, welcome. I mean, let me give you your MLS sheet so I can look like every single other person that's walked in. Or are you going to separate yourself from the other 15,000 people that are going to, or 53,000 other agents that could be working that day, which we know they're not. But you have to be able to differentiate yourself from everyone else that comes in. So are you willing to practice for 10 to 15 minutes in order to, when you get a game-winning shot, you actually can hit it? I read, uh, we're big on promoters of, I listen to books now. So one of the books I'm listening to is uh, Extreme Ownership, How Navy Seals Lead and Win. It's an interesting thing to talk about. These guys are just absolute extreme badasses in life. They practice all the time, all the time, all the time. So they do get into a situation like that, that they don't make mistakes. So when you work an open house and you have four people that walk in, one of those four could be an opportunity for you to sell that property or not, not sell that one, it'd be one down the road. And we're not talking about making 500 bucks. We're not talking life or death like a Navy SEAL is. But we are talking about 7,000, 10,000, $20,000 at a time. So are you willing to put in 15 minutes of extra practice so that you can capitalize on making that work? So I love this quote. I've been, I don't know how long I've been using this, but it's been going on for a long time in the last, like, at least I probably, it's on my board actually, I think in my office right now. Ideas without implementation is purely entertainment. Ideas without implementation is purely entertainment. You can come up with a thousand ideas. I can give you a million ideas on what you should be doing with your business and your career. Unless you actually do something about it and implement something, doesn't mean shit. Sorry for my language, but it doesn't. It doesn't. Unless you actually put something into action, it's just purely entertainment. You can have a million ideas. I can give you a million ideas, but unless you pick one to four of those to go, hey, this is what I am going to do on a regular basis to make sure that I'm productive. Because remember we talked about it as well. It's about the long game. You're not gonna have someone, I've been doing this a long time. I've never had someone call me and tell me, let me buy this house from you. It's never happened. I've never had anyone buy an open house from me. I've worked probably 300, 400 open houses. I told them this about a couple weeks ago. I've never had someone walk in and buy the open house from me. Never, never happened. To say it wouldn't happen for you is not true because I have heard of it happening. And I think Johnny Walker upstairs had it happen last weekend. So can it happen? Absolutely. Maybe it's something wrong with me. Maybe I should look back at that actually. <laughs> <laughs> One of the other big things that we like to talk about as far as our organizations go is education. Staying on top of platforms, staying educated. Uh, Justin is going to talk a little bit about our education platform, what we do as far as education um, and lead generation goes, and then I'll come back for a little bit. So gotcha. thank you, Justin. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I look at it. So Nick has got a ton of awesome stuff that he talks about as far as implementation, what, but sometimes it's hard to dial down and say specifically, what are the activities that we should be doing? Like, what are our prospecting? So, um, especially as a new agent, it's like there's all these shiny objects. And which one can you really focus on where you're looking at the doing done, all your to-do list, you can have a thousand of them, but what are the three that you're gonna focus on to really capitalize your skills? So, the way I look at it is, there are three major things that we need to do as real estate agents. One, you gotta lead generate, you gotta get appointments, and then you gotta close those appointments and get 
successful closings. But within each one of them, these are the, the pillars that we really promote within our team to really focus on. So starting with your sphere, open house, Facebook, and then eventually it'll lead to repeat referral. You nurture those leads appropriately with your scripts and with your practicing and really I dial it in your talents and then you have your dialed in buyer consultations and your listing presentations. Like how much time do you spend on your listing presentations? Okay, have you, have you ever, well, have you ever heard oh, of you were saying city wings it. You're making me nervous. <laughs> You're making me very nervous. Right. Right but the one thing I look at is, is I've heard the phrase list to exist. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So if this is list to exist, one of the things I start to think about is, what do we do as people to exist? Live. Breathe. <laughs> right? What else? Be hydrate. Eat. Hydrate. Drinking. Right? Water, or <laughs> right? <laughs> we all have those things. He's got the eleven week old. You know he's drinking. <laughs> right? uh, so these are all things that we do to exist. And how much time in a day do you spend breathing? All day. All day, every day. And not only that, but do you think about it? But you've done it for so long that it just naturally happens. So when you do your listing, if we list to exist, how much time do you put into preparing your listing presentation? If it's what you need to exist as a real estate agent, shouldn't you be spending a lot of time on it and focusing on it and really dialing in, like the practice, so you can really hit those home runs, hit those shots that we're talking about. And then at that point, working yourself through the process, anticipating the needs of any buyer or any seller as they're walking through the process and having built-in systems. So you're not necessarily trying to be reactive, you're being proactive. Does that make sense? And if you do those all these things successfully, when you close, that person then becomes a person that becomes a repeat customer, repeat client, and is willing to refer you out to the masses. They have the megaphone. But to, in order to get all these things done effectively, you have to have goal setting, which starts the ball rolling, and then you have to time block effectively and efficiently to getting achieving those goals that we're looking for. So the idea of education within our platform is we have a course, Elevated Ed, that basically each one of these red dots is a, cert, is, is a class that walks through to say, well, how do we do these things? We're not just saying, hey, go get on Facebook, post. Yeah. We're gonna give you specific ideas about how you do those things, how you can be methodical, how you can over overcome our own personal objections. Like, I don't like the way I sound. All right, we're not gonna change your voice. We're just gonna try to help you. And then within the education piece, I think accountability, whether it's an accountability person that you're talking to in the morning, or you have a team leader that you meet with to help you overcome all those obstacles, I think it's critically important. So um, education, this is simplistic to me. This is a flow chart that lets you see it. Don't be intimidated by everything. When you walk in, you're like, contract, paperwork, document, ah, what do I do? I gotta, ah. If you work through the process, keep it really simple. Lead generation, appointments, and closings. Are we doing those things? And if you need some ideas, we're all in here where you should be spending some of your time. That early morning routine, what you're doing from six o'clock to nine o'clock, you're developing something in here. That's what you're doing, one of your three to five bets. So that's my overview of how I see the activity to hopefully break things down a little bit. It's got a lot of great stuff. So um, hopefully this helps kind of simplify it a little bit. Yeah. Don't Thank freak you. you out too much. You. So guys, as your lead generation goes, lead generation to nurture, who's good at nurturing leads? One. Anyone else good? I, I have been terrible at it forever. I've been getting better. Horrible at it? Well, I was, yeah, I was interesting because, you know, I'm going to... I'm working on it. No, I'm going to say I'm going to dig yeah. into because you, you said you're getting into uh, more so, of a cold calling status. Yeah. Like so challenging, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you're calling, what, what system are you using? So I'm using, well, so there's a guy named Ricky Swerve. He's like, awesome. he was, yeah, so he's awesome. Um, so I followed his concept, which is simple prospecting. Yeah. So his main, main you know, you so you're not the calling real the cold realty resource remit. I mean, yeah, no, I'm using the cold realty resource. Oh, is how you get as how is how you get the numbers. Um, through Red X. Oh, through Red X. Okay, Red that's X. what I was kind of curious. The Red X really. vortex. Yeah. I have I have Vulcan okay. Seven for a while, but I just that's Vulcan Seven. Yeah. Done those things. Mm -hmm. So, no. so, I, so I'm working now on on because I'm just getting back into this. Yeah. Coming up with my nurturing. How are you gonna How are you gonna stay in touch with yes. these people? Yes. So. The reason why I ask that yeah. is because you're doing probably the hardest activity yeah. of all of them, 
in order to try to create your business. I've been there, I've done it, I grew lots of this gray hair during that time. It happened rapidly, it happened fast. I woke up one day and I'm like, damn. Like, look at this guy, look, 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 look at him, he's, just, he's got three kids, he's got no gray hair, it's amazing. Um, just for that. But with, 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 what, with what, you, what kind of effort and time she's putting into, she already admitted to it, yeah. that adding a system, which we talked about it, a CRM system, that naturally touches these clients, it takes seven times, okay? She's doing some different things, she might be able to capture a little bit higher on the first try, because most of these people that she's gonna talk to either were actively looking to sell their home uh, and didn't, or are trying to already actively sell it right now and have not been able to be successful. And um, or not even that. Or not even that. So she's circle prospecting. Because is, homeowners is, is around the neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's to build relationships. Absolutely. Yeah. So adding into that, having the right system around that, whether that's putting them into a CMA system, a cloud CMA system, mm -hmm. which you can buy through uh, MLS right now, and sending them <laughs> once a month. That she's putting hours each day into this, and that if she has someone that, well, I'm not ready to do this, but in nine months, maybe, yeah. then all of a sudden she forgets. I don't know how many, like in my active active boom account, I kind of have 8,750 people. Like, mm -hmm. I only have 330 that I actually keep track of right now, because that's how I have it sorted, but there's 8,400 of them that are archived that still get emails from me. I just don't look at them because it's way down the road. They either told me lots of different foul languages and things like that. Mm -hmm. But having a way, especially for someone like this, that she's doing this type of prospecting, I need to put him, them here, categorized, categorized. Spending an extra probably five to 10 minutes doing that could make her down the road, 12, 24 months down the road, a lot more money whether if you forget it, because I've called people, gone back through my entire system when it was much smaller and called everyone, I don't know how many people, I've already bought a home. I've already bought a home. I already sold my home. Who I already bought you? a home. Yeah. Huh? Who are you? Yeah, who are you? Did you actually say anything to me? I don't remember you. Like all that kind of stuff. So that's one of the most frustrating things that I went through is that I didn't implement this in the beginning. And that's why we think it's so important, so important to have some kind of nurture system built in. Because if you're going to do the work, great. You can pick over and plant as many seeds as possible, but unless you water, on a consistent basis, what's the point, right? So having a little bit of system. The only reason I brought that up is because yeah. I think it's really, really important that we touch into that. Lead generation 101. I can find lead in a shopping center by talking to someone in a grocery store. I actually got a lead out of the bar I was actually at. This guy was randomly talking about me about something and he, he owned a blind store. And I actually started talking to him about that and, Biggest thing that I want to convey about this as well, about lead generation, is you are not here to sell anything. You do not want to be, where is it? This guy. This guy right here. Not into selling anything. You don't actually sell anything, you're providing value. What is the value that brings you to the table? What separates you from anyone else? So when you talk to someone, and you people have heard me say it a hundred times, I call it searching for white elephants. White elephants don't exist, they're not a real thing. I mean, they might be one albino elephant, but understanding the motivations of people that you're having conversations with will only give you insights into how they interpret the real estate world, okay? Knowing what, what and how questions, always use what and how, never use why, but what, what and how questions to use in order to have a conversation with someone to figure out if they're living in their dream home. Are they thinking about looking at another home in 12 months, 18 months? Take that as a note to myself. I didn't even bring up the fact that I was a real estate agent, but I'm gonna put them in my CRM, gonna backdate this, call this person in six months. And that's what it does. It's about that. As many people you can log in that way and filter that. You have a thousand tools through MHG. We bring a lot to the table as our team, lot team does as well. What tools you use, you got Zillow. You can obviously pay for Zillow leads. People can bash on that shit as much as you want. Zillow, 185 million people go to Zillow a month. 185 million people look at it. People complain about it, it is what it is. You got Boomtown, we use that with us, we use it here. Bomb Bomb videos, everyone use Bomb Bomb videos. Video is the way of talking to people, a uh, way to send them a video text or a video email, a um, way to connect with them. 
You can use Google, Google Paper Clicks, a great way to, to create leads. Uh, you can take away from what people search for Zillow, you Google Paper Click. Open houses. People can talk about as much as they want, but open houses have been one of the key ways of producing leads forever. Everyone that walks into an open house walks in there for a reason. Now, ladies, you walk into the department store, you go to buy some shoes, someone's standing right there at the front, you walk right in, you know exactly what you're doing. Hi, hi ma'am, can I help you uh, find anything? No, I'm just looking, just looking. You walk right in, you get your four pairs of shoes, you buy them and you walk right back out, <laughs> right? Every person that's walking in that open house is walking in there for a reason. It's whether or not you have the skill set to figure out what that ultimate reason they're walking in there is. The conversation, very simple, have it practice, knowing what questions to ask, dig, digging deeper into their white elephants, figuring out what it is. So someone walks in, I always like to ask how they found the property, dig into how they're actively looking. If they tell me online, I obviously know that they're looking online. They're like, oh, what, what makes you happy to look online? I'd like to know about my neighbor. I live here in the neighborhood. Awesome, great, wonderful. Figure out what, the, what their needs are. How long you've been living in your house? How long? I've been there for four years. That's amazing. You've probably seen a lot of equity grow out in your home where you know, don't want to sell them on anything. So you're just figuring out questions about how they're thinking about the real estate world. You know that they've been there for four years. Are you going to instantly go, let me give you a CRA, a, a market analysis? No, I'm good. I'm just looking. Just looking. Cool. Well, you know, you can try to get a sign-in sheet. So everyone likes to do, wants to get information from people, right? Anyone have struggles at their open houses getting people to sign in? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel like he's got a good script, he just doesn't know what it is yet. <laughs> so I've been using this, and if you don't use it, I, I recommend using it. So you're representing a seller, obviously, if you're there for a listing. Have you, have you used the seller script? So I always say, you know, for the security and system, the seller has requested that we have everyone sign in. If you don't mind us taking 30 seconds to put your name and information down, or have them take a flyer around with them and have them judge the house. Like, they would love information, feedback on the property. Please just fill it out. They might not put everything on there. You might get a name, you might get a number. If it's a neighbor, you know that they live in the neighborhood. If you can get their last name, get on tax records. You know exactly their address. You can find that stuff real quick. Then you get a CMA. Then you're like, you know, I know you said you lived in there four years. I think you have a lot of equity in your home. And I just wanted to show you what, how much you do have. If I can ever be any answers or qu uh, questions for you, here you are. Easy way, that could be a hot lead right there. You never know. Let's go in a little bit above extra mile. Facebook, everyone wants to be a Facebook superstar. Um, lots of ways to stay active in Facebook. We actually teach a social media class. I've been teaching it for a long time. The biggest thing about Facebook is you're getting judged on every single thing that you do. Uh, so if you're trying to work with people, remember that people are looking at every single thing that you do, not just the stuff you talk about real estate. So I say it's a very simple aspect. You want to show who you are. What are you as a person? what you do, I don't care what it is, what you do here, there, there, and what you're about. It could be your beliefs. Now, the interesting thing about that is you could be crossing some lines with other people. So if you're a political person, I'll tell you right now, probably not the best idea to post that stuff on Facebook because 50% of the people are gonna hate you automatically. And if you like Donald Trump, don't like Donald Trump, it doesn't matter, just 30% of people are gonna like you, the other 70% are not. If you don't like this or don't like that or don't like, being divisive is not your goal with Facebook. Your goal is to be branded, right? Facebook is not a place for lead generation. I don't care what anyone tells you. You're working a sphere of influence so those are people that you know. You're not lead generating unless you're paying for ads, getting people that you don't know. What you're doing on Facebook is called brand awareness. This is who I am, this is what I do, and this is what I am about, this is my brand. Mixed Fair Real Estate, Homes and Health, I've been doing that for five years, it means nothing. I like, I like fitness, I like homes, worked together when I started and so it's stuck. You know, it doesn't matter, I'm with my home, it doesn't matter what brand you are, you're just letting people know who you are, what you do, and what you're about. Hey, we all have Armless. There's some great tools on there, you can use it to your advantage. Using Cloud CMA, if you bought the upgraded version, I would just tell you you should because it costs about, I think it's $180. The programs that you get with it are well worth the $180. I've been using Cloud CMA, uh, which is a natural uh, cost market analysis you can send out to people, and it costs 20 bucks a month. So that's $240 a year. You get that included with the other six programs, it's already worth it just surely by doing that. 
Lots of other tools. We got Larry Digman that works here. Jeremy Clevin, another tool. We just had Mark come in, another tool. <laughs> we got this guy, another tool that works for you. A lot of tools that you can use to help you guys get to where you want to go. But marketing is two different ways, either online or offline marketing. Everyone wants to do online marketing. That's what everyone wants to do because it's easy and I can hide in my room and I can do it behind closed doors and I don't have to have anyone see or know anything about me. So organic reach, obviously doing your own personal website, challenging. Social media, that's where everyone really likes to go right now. I'm an Instagram superstar. Um, you can come find me and buy houses off me on Instagram. Phoenix Real Estate Guru, follow me. So, uh, pre premium content, <laughs> uh, little plug right there, right? I didn't put it enough. Premium content, new listings, off market, new construction, value content. So online wise, again, we wanna separate yourself from anything else. So what do you bring to the table that's a little different? Like we always wanna be segmenting ourselves from the other. Really there's only 18,000 active realtors and the number that I actually heard this morning is that uh, only 4,500 sell over 12 homes a year. So of the 53,000, 4,500 sell over 12 homes a year. So one per month. So uh, how do you separate yourself? Blogging, I actually didn't update this, I should have put blogging. Uh, video blogging, just telling you about your life is a great way to connect with people. And this doesn't even have to be real estate related. Remember, you're connecting with people so they know who you are, what you do, and what you're about. If you're huge into social aspects of your life, um, we have a member of our team, Christy Meek, she's into uh, the CCD. Uh, I don't she, know what, I don't know but she's in that. Africa right now doing humanitarian work. Like awesome. super, super cool stuff. Like helping families. And she's been posting about this all week. The love that, that we all have for her is genuine because it's just freaking awesome. Like as a person, who she is, is really, really cool. Is it working on selling real estate? No, but people might love her the opportunity to be like, you're such a nice person. I know you're not gonna screw me over, so I'd like you to sell my house. Like showing who you are. So she's been documented, and it's just kind of cool. That's the reason why I bring it up. Email marketing, you can have 10,000 emails. Drop it out to people, you have you connected. Digital advertising, we kind of talked about this. Google pay-per-click, Zillow, realtor.com. It's expensive, but probably, honestly, if I had to lie, Probably the best ways to get the hottest leads that are going to come online, besides doing your sphere of influence, or doing some of the other ones. Media attention, we're not really so much uh, as uh, getting involved with just media aspects. Offline marketing, direct marketing. Anyone do EDDM? Farming? Interesting aspect about farming. You ever done EDM? Yeah, I no. It's expensive. I, I mean, I don't. It's not expensive. Know it's not. It's not really it's like expensive. Six, like I'll even tell you, there is a math problem that goes into farming. Scottsdale. You guys all want to be Scottsdale agents. You guys work in different parts of the valley. Scottsdale. 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 Where are you going to work at? Where do you uh, want to? Be? Either Glendale or, or Gilbert. Glendale or Gilbert. That kind of. Wow. Well, I'm, 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 I'm born and raised here, so you were, so you were I was raised in Glendale, but I live in Gilbert, so it's a little bit. I'll mm -hmm. even tell you, go to Gilbert. Go to Gilbert. Uh, mm -hmm. You do where you live. Uh, what about you guys? North Phoenix. North Phoenix. Okay. Um, EDDM. Uh, it's on the post office search. You can actually pick certain addresses. I would tell you there's a math problem that tells you if you need to do it or not. It's very simple. Um, you want to know how much the uh, turnover of the actual neighborhood is that you're going to look at. If that turnover is not 6% per year, that means 6 out of every 100 houses, why would you even farm there? No point. Um, of those 6 out of 10 houses, if it's dominated by one agent, that agent sells over 20% of the houses, what's the point of doing that? You're competing with someone that already has a huge market share um, with that. Um, other little team prop, it's hard to compete with Slot of Tarts in Glendale with Lawton team because there's 82 listings over there. And we have signs in all different neighbors because they farm that specifically. I work this side of the town. Scottsdale's oversaturated with agents. There's actually surprisingly not a lot of dominant agents because it's so many agents. Um, the one area that is really heavily dominated is MMR, McDowell Mountain Ranch. There's a team that literally works McDowell Mountain Ranch and owns 35% of the listings. So you wanna go farm there? I would recommend not, but you can try. Like, but it's, there's a math problem to figure it out. So if it's under 20% owner of the agent, over 6% turnover, then it's worth it. I'd say start at 750 houses to 1,000. You gotta do it for over a year. Mm -hmm. So it takes a year. So I take that budget, very beginning of the year. I have this money, I'm gonna go for the next year because you probably won't see anything for a long time. The key thing is that how you're gonna capture them. Is it just gonna be 
brand awareness or you have a lead capture aspect on that flyer that makes sense. Like I bring it up to myself, Cloud CMA is a great way to do cost marketing out or uh, uh, marketing house for each home. So like on, I own all these different domain names. My Phoenix home is worth, my Scottsdale home is worth, my Mesa home is worth, my Glendale home is worth. But no matter what area I put a flyer out in, I just change the name. So if they type in that, it sends them to uh, a CMA, what, which we also, what's my home worth? We see them on Facebook now, they get no clicks anymore because it was like four years ago. Uh, but if you put that on a flyer, people will log in there and actually be able to type in their name and their address and get a CMA automatized. There's your lead gen. That's lead gen rather than brand awareness, the two big separations. Um, traditional is prospecting. No, people talk about door knocking. I mean, you can do it. It can be fruitful. She's doing a, a old school prospecting, which is circle prospecting. I even have it on here. Um, open houses, sponsorships. If you have kids, I, ha I can't wait till my daughter goes to school. I'm so excited. Because I just know that I can get in there. I'm just going to be like, okay, sports team sponsored by Nick's Dear Real Estate. This feel really is like, so one of my buddies is a mortgage lender. He's honestly told me that one of the best connections that he can make with people is because they get to know exactly who he is. He's not, not being himself, he's there for his daughter and his son. But he allows it just the conversations to naturally flow that turns into that. So. Um, sponsoring kids dreams, affiliate programs. So financial insurance. So ladies, I was just, we were talking about this the other day. Hair and nails, not gonna joke. The best lead generation systems for females. I wish I had a better, like my barber does not give me any leads, but hair and nails, they have so many clients. So many clients. Mm -hmm. If they love you, my best referral, I don't have a ton of them honestly, is a lady that does eyelashes, my wife's eyelashes, she sews in her eyelashes and does microblading for eyebrows. She's, I sold her house, bought her another one, but she's like one of our good friends. She has sent me more business than anyone else because she has 600 clients, 600 people that she can literally have. I give her a stack of business cards every month while I buy her office. It's like, hey, flowers, gift certificate, business cards. Love you, talk to you later. And that's, that's honestly worth that for sure. Uh, events and trade shows, put yourself out there. You can't create a business unless you're willing to step out your comfort zone. You've all heard this. All great things come from out your, outside your comfort zone. If you're nervous about being out there, probably not the right business. You've got to be willing to step out there. She's already stepping out there. Outbound calls, sports, uh, sale, uh, if you don't be your sphere of influence, it's going to be hard, or, or hard as it is. Dang it. She's been not fun. Um, the other one was uh, expired listings and and expired listings and for sale by owners and then referrals. Number one source. If you're starting this business and this is your first year, actually, let me check that. If you're in this business at all whatsoever, you should talk to every single one of your friends once every three months, at least. Call them. Say, hey, Justin, what's up, buddy? How's the family? Good man. I saw you were in Minnesota last week. How was the trip? Time of my life. There's time of your life. I heard your daughter got sick, right? Yeah, she's totally sick. That sucks, that man. Well, that's great. You know, I just want to touch base with you. Let you know again. You know, looking at your housing, we always want to touch base about real estate. I know. Real estate, as you all know, is foundationally built on referrals from friends and family just like yourself. So if you know anyone looking to buy or sell, I'd really, really, truly be indebted to you for any referrals. I know you probably don't have anyone today. But in the future, hope you think of me. Simple conversation. Obviously, we want to make it a little longer, but have the conversation. I don't want to see like people always tell me. I don't want to seem like I'm calling people and bothering them. They don't hear from me anyways. So what's the difference? <laughs> they don't. You don't. No one calls anybody. How many calls do you get today? She probably gets a lot. Well, not. She writes a lot. All right. Who the hell was calling me last night? All right. But honestly, like your phone rings four or five times a day. Take your step out of there. If, I, if you guys leave here with one thing, if anything, three of your friends every day, five days a week. That's 15 people a week. You do that 50 times. You should be getting something out of that. That's a foundational part of business here. Foundational. There is no bad way to create a lead. You just gotta know how to have the conversation, know how to actually nurture it a little bit, 
And then when they're actually ready to do something, actually be willing to actually call them and ask them if they're ready to do something. Push yourself out there. She's calling all these people. If she doesn't wait till when they're ready, you're not gonna sell anybody on, you're not gonna sell anybody. People, consumers are the most educated consumers they've ever been. Do they actually, here's an interesting thing, does anyone actually need a real estate agent to buy or sell a house? No. They don't, they don't need us. So what is the reason why they should work with you? What is your value? What is the difference between working with you and anybody else? Always have that in mind. You just have to be willing to ask yourself the question at the right time, have the conversation and know their motivation. And what does your value bring to the table? So at the very end of this, very simple thing. Who's done this? You ever written this down? The conversion of how many conversations you have? This is your basic tracker. She's doing this, she probably knows. So I'll, we'll do it with you guys. Anybody want to be the first person? So I always start at this. This is very easy. Gross commissions income. How much money I want to make this year? We'll keep it very simple. We'll say, I bet you all be happy. That's $250,000. Who would be happy with 250? Be happy with 250? That's a good year. No, I'm, that'd be a good year. So you take your goal, you divide it by your average commission net. So um, I even took this a little lower, so I put it at 0 0.025, so 2.5% commission on a $300,000 house. Average listing house in Scottsdale is way over that, but um, average in Phoenix is 327, I think currently. It's pretty high. Um, but if you do 20 or do 2.5% on a $300,000 sale, that's $7,500 in gross commission. If you pay a, a split or anything like that, it might be a little less. So you take that, times it by how many conversations that you need to have in order to get an appointment. So it'd be, that number right there is supposed to be 1366. So you have 1366 conversations in order to make $250,000. You see how that worked? So goal, average commission net, which is the 7,500, so your goal, 250,000, divided by 750 dollars, 7,500 was your X times 41 conversations, because that's how many we need to have in order to get an appointment, 1366, divided by how many weeks in the year you actually want to work, because we know you're not going to all work 56 weeks, that's not going to happen, because uh, you need to take out vacation times how many days. The actual number if you want to know this, if you're a good conversion person and you can close one out of 40, 41, is five. 5.5. 5. If you have 5.5 5 new conversations per day, your technical closings for the year should be 30. 30 closings. 5.5 5 new conversations each day. You're going on an appointment and you're closing one of every 41 at some point in the next the hard thing about this as well, guys, is it's, remember it's long game, so some of them might be two years down the road, but that will equal $250,000 per year. 5.5 .5 new conversations. It's much easier when those conversations are with your friends and family, because they're really the ones that refer you business. It's much harder when you don't have any friends and family that live here. I went through that, went through it for a long time. Um, so if you guys take anything out of this, Know your numbers, have your goal, and work backwards. Hey, I'm going to have this many conversations. Then, if you go through 90-day stretches, because we work in a 90-day business, and you realize that, hey, I've had 500 conversations, and I've went on zero appointments, what would that tell you? Something is wrong, not with what you're doing, but how you're doing it. The conversations are wrong, you're saying it incorrectly, the psychology behind what you're saying is incorrect, the scripting could be wrong. Um, I know for a fact my biggest flaw is I talk really fast. Like I'm way up here um, all the time. Um, when I have conversations with clients, one of my goal is to always mimic them and bounce back with their tone or however they work um, and match back with them because no one's gonna change for you, you gotta change for them. Especially if you talk to someone who's very low tone, he's from Texas, <laughs> he's here to possibly buy a house next year. Well, that's great, Ted. I'm happy that I found you. Because my team and I, we are the number one team in real estate here in Phoenix. If you'd like to sign in on my signing sheet, I'll be happy to keep in contact with you. 
then you have to match their persona. With myself, I'm always so far up here. When the guy calls me on the phone, he's just like, hi, I'm uh, interested in looking at this property. I'm a cash buyer. That's great. I'm so excited to see you. And he hangs up the phone on me. <laughs> well, I, there's a reason why he hung up the phone on me. It's not because he did something wrong. It's because I was not prepared and I did not know what I was supposed to say. Okay? If you take anything out of the class, know your numbers, put it into a schedule if you can. If you don't like schedules, add Trello or to do doing done board if you want to do that. Um, honestly, that's not honestly old school way, it's actually really easy. That to do during done board is awesome because if it's on sticky notes, everything that's on the done board, especially the stuff you should do every day, just goes right back to the doing board or onto the to do board every day. So it's like the five, five, four, five old school, old clients, five new clients and four friends and family. If you do that every day, we just move them back to the beginning, do it every day. Like I said, that should be at least 20 deals per year. And I think we all can survive off that. So. Five disciplines of execution. Have you clearly stated emotionally impactful goal up and vision boards? If you don't have a vision board, put it up. I have a one-year goal, five-year goals, and 20-year goal boards in my office at home just to make sure I piss myself off when I go in there and I'm not productive. When I go in there and I have not been able to buy my 1959 Chevy Corvette convertible, there's one reason why that did not happen. It's getting right in front of me. Right here. Know your act on your KPIs, key performance indicators. We just kind of talked about that. Visually scoreboard everything, track. You must know why you're winning or you're losing. Up your cadence of accountability. Have a little bit of accountability, and I'll even preach this more than anything, guys. Celebrate your winning. I'm sitting here complaining to Justin about an hour and a half ago about winning just because it's my goals in life are very long term. And I'll even tell you, when I go home today, I'm gonna to be really happy about today. I got to stand here and talk to 10 people and hopefully you guys left with something that you guys will be productive about. So celebrate the smallest wins because you're getting to do whatever you want to do. You might be able to make as much money as you want to make, but there'll be days that aren't that good. But know that no matter what you did, you did your best and you did the things you're supposed to do and that that will be winning. You guys got any questions? Probably not. Normally how it works. So how, where, how does uh, the lot and team feel about like, um, you know, Zillow coming into the market and um, so, all those? So Open Door, Zillow, Offer Pad, all buys houses, houses, right? Zillow does? Mm -hmm. Zillow buys houses here. I'll touch it here in a second. Okay. Um, so, huh? Hold on, aren't you guys the uh, agent for Zillow? Yeah. So, <laughs> yes, we do. That's so, so, no, I'll even touch, I'll even touch <laughs> this. I'll even touch this because it's important to ask. So, Open Door, Offer Pad, and Zillow all buy houses in the Valley. Why? Make money. No, the consumer hates selling houses. No matter what, we all want to complain and do whatever. We, real estate. Fight Zillow, fight Open Door, fight OfferPad. Guess what? You don't. I like said, oh, we should take back our listings from ML or from Zillow. Well, we were gonna fight it. I'm like, it's not your listing. You don't. We don't own anything. We are a component to make things happen. Like the consumer will always dictate what needs to be done. Blockbuster was great. Netflix is way better. No one. You can complain about Netflix all you want. It doesn't matter. So Open Door is here for a reason. They have 675 listings. I lost seven. Seven listings to Open Door last year. That was a lot of damn money. It pissed me off because I put a lot of effort into it. Time, money, expenses in to make that happen. Lost them all. Why? They actually spent more money on selling with them. They sold at 12%. Because why? Because the experience was better. The experience was better because they get to go, I'm gonna close this day, I'm gonna sell for this much, there's no open houses, there's no nothing. Now, does it work for everybody? No, but are the value pitch that you have to bring to people better be practiced and prepared for that. If you're not going into a $400,000, so here we go, I'll touch this real quick as well. Who knows the absor what absorption rate is? Anybody? Absorption rate? I know he does. So absorption rate, I know Brogan does, my rock star, superstar starting off. Absorption rate is how long it would take us as a, an economy to absorb all the houses on the market, right? So I break it down in very simply, single family homes. An average market with no appreciation, no depreciation is six months. So if we had 100 houses for sale, it would take us six months to buy all those houses with no new inventory coming on, okay? 
Now, if it's a depreciation or a buyer's market, it's over seven months. So it takes longer than seven months to absorb all those homes. Buyer's market, depreciation. Now, seller's market, which we all know is what we're in right now. Who knows, who's heard the term, the market's hot? I don't know what the hell that means. <laughs> that don't make no sense to me whatsoever. I'm very analytical, I like math. So a, a seller's market is anything under six months absorption rate. So if it's under six months absorption, that means appreciation will occur. It's very basic economic principles, supply and demand. We talk about inventory, technically a crisis. So if you look at our absorption rate for East Valley, he's, I think he's the only one that said Glendale, um, but if you look at Phoenix, Chandler, Mesa, Scottsdale, Gilbert, uh, and Tempe, Phoenix, Scottsdale, Tempe, Mesa, Chandler, Gilbert, our absorption rate is 0.93. We do, for single family housing, under $500,000, okay? So what is the consumer doing, especially with the open door offer pad? They don't have to sell with us because the absorption rate is so small, there's nothing for sale. They're getting close to top value from open door and open door is able to flip it for a couple grand more, they don't care. Now, I'll touch the Zillow thing. So Zillow does buy houses here because they saw an opportunity to make business and open door is gonna do it anyways. They interviewed 20 different teams and agents in the Valley. They chose George Lawton to, to represent their listing. So as they buy properties, we sell them for them. So they're not actually cutting anyone out. They're just trying to turn the inventory over since it's so low that we want to bring more houses to the market, which actually technically, hopefully, will get us out of where we are because if the inventory gets tighter and tighter, that means less business for everybody because there's not enough houses to buy. We're going to see, I think it's going to get tighter probably, especially at the single family housing market. If you go to luxury and go to $500,000 above, it's the opposite. It's like 5.5 months inventory. It's still a seller's market, but very dramatically different than what it is, especially under $400,000, which is what Open Door does, OfferPad does, and Zillow goes after it because there's so much compressed buyer demand that they have to figure out ways to alleviate that, which is if people have equity in their homes, they don't have to sell them, they just sit and stay. So if you walk into a listing presentation and you have not practiced a way to get that listing away from Open Door or from OfferPad or from Zillow, because the reality is, is they're not gonna go anywhere until the market dramatically changes. So you need to be prepared as agents in a way to combat that which is, I honestly walk into listing presentations now with the offer pad or open door listing with me. <laughs> like, you don't wanna know what it is? You know what they're gonna buy it for? Go buy it for right here. Go buy it, that's what they're gonna buy your house for. And they might already know, but I'm still prepared. That shows that one, A, I did my due diligence. I probably know what they're gonna buy it for. Then I tell them what I think that I could sell it for. The question is, the real key question is, is what you're gonna do better for that, that consumer? The answer probably is not every time, yes, because it might not benefit them to sell with you. And that's the kind of hard thing, this is the hard, brutal truth of this as a business, straight consumer business, that it might not be best for them to work with you. Does that suck? Damn right, that sucks. But you either evolve and change or you die. The biggest businesses in the world 100 years ago, 115 years ago, were railroads. They own more money than anything else. Railroads dominated things. You know what changed? They didn't change, they were the railroad business. Well, they should have been the mass transportation business because once airplanes came around, that business was gone. They so, were blockbusters. Huh? Blockbusters. Block, anything, like things are gonna always constantly move and shift, guys. You guys are your own individual business. You guys have to be willing to stay in front of trends and move with them evolve, shift, do the things that you need to do to keep making money. Like, who, who's seen lists for less? $3,000 listing fees. I see that all the time. Like, oh, uh, what's, it, what's it called? I'm trying to think of that. I'm blanking on the name of what they call it, but it's uh, There's one here. In Josh, did you again? But no, they just do three, well, I know, but they do $3,000 list. That's what it is, that's the list. It's, it's list, uh, for, oh, it's flat fee. Flat, flat I was thinking flat fee yeah, listings. Yeah, so everyone, you do flat fee listings. Why shouldn't I sell with them? Flat fee listing, it's three grand. What are they actually going after? Because it's average house is $300,000. They're really selling for 4%. Because they're still gonna tell you to offer three to the buyer. They're gonna say it for four, and they might actually take it down to where they're gonna take three, two and a half, two and a half. Like, I don't know how they're gonna break it down. They're saying that they're gonna sell it for, list it for $3,000, which is great, 
but really they're offering 4%. Where we're talking about offering five, so really the consumer is saving three grand. Now, are they gonna put any marketing effort behind that? Are they gonna put much sweat, in, sweat, in, sweat equity behind that? Are they gonna put any money into it after they take that discounted listing? So, like I said, practicing knowing your objection handlers will be key. Does not mean you're gonna win. But it doesn't mean ignore. One, one of the things that I, in our listing, so we teach class on listing presentations too, and you gotta target what are the, pro, the, the pain points of your, your seller. To me, it looks like it's time, money, and stress. Right. So you need to tackle that. Zillow, open door, offer pad are targeting the time yep. and the stress. So yep. if you can minimize that time and stress and show them the benefit of the money that you're saving them, if you look at it and say, hey, they're offering you this, I'm offering this, if I put 10 grand, 20 grand, 50 grand on this table right now, would you care? Yeah, it looks like a whole lot when it's on the table and stacks of cash. Yeah. Let me go ahead and get that for you. I know it's going to yeah. be a little more, it could potentially be a little more time, but the stress, I'm going to do everything I can to prepare for it. I mean, you can look at my Zillow reviews and start preparing them down that process to feel that confidence yeah. so they don't have to turn to a Zillow offer pad open door. Yeah, we want to set, like, we do, we do do that side of business, but we still are heavily invested in traditional, like, we still have an entirely traditional side. Like, mm -hmm. we still want five and a half, six percent on listings. We still offer three percent on buyers. We just add in another element to our business hopefully to survive and continue to grow and make things make things better for everyone that that we work as a team so um it's just it's going to constantly evolve guys tech is going to take its chunk of everything mm -hmm. it's going to it's either you recognize it and try to make yourself relevant or you don't and you can still do it like there's people that if you can still run a there's nothing saying that you can't do it uh, there's still 12, 12 transactions, 15 transactions, 18 transactions a year, easily done to do the right yeah. stuff. It's just a matter of that it's going to get harder to really ramp up to the 80 to 100 transactions per year because a lot of those ones that you're going to lose are going to be picked off by sheer off one thing, and he already said it, it's convenience. Sellers are going to, consumers are going to dictate everything. They're going to control how it's done. You want to measure it. You want to. If you keep running into the same thing, I ran into it seven times last year. Seven listing appointments that I grinded my ass off for that I actually got in the door and couldn't get it because they called me back three days later after I called them fifteen times because they wouldn't answer their phone and they were like, "We've decided to do this." And I was like, I thought back in my head was like, "Is it something that I'm doing or is it something that's physically changing?" And if you look at the way the market is, it's just something the way the market's and, going. And I would even say. To go further on it, I buyers right now are taking up about six percent of the of the greater metropolitan area. Six percent. That means there's ninety four percent still out there. Yeah. To me, what is the biggest competition is how many new agents are flooding into the market. And as they flood into the market, they all know somebody. So all of a sudden, these deals that you would be getting, you got that one guy that got his first deal that his mom's now selling, said using that yeah. brand new agent versus somebody else. Yeah. Which, what's your value? And how are you reaching those team. people consistently and nurturing them? What are your scripts? So they feel that they're going to be so much better served by going with an experienced agent versus the new agent that just started. Yeah. And if they're a new agent, I right, right. reverse it. Right. I reverse it. You can come up to them and be like, I don't have any other listings. I'm going to work harder for you than <laughs> anyone else is going to work for. Because that's just the They got too much going on. Well, they, they will not answer your phone call. I'll answer right. your phone call. And that's why I look at it. Like, I pimp my team. Like, I may not have a ton of, a ton of transactions, but freaking lot team at 675 yeah. last year. Yeah. Be like, those are the people I'm surrounded with. So I may not have a ton, but I have tons of resources. But yeah, utilize your strength, guys. Like I said, from the very beginning, my goal for you guys to do with anything, four. Four things, four lead generation activities that you want to highlight, and you have to consistently do them. And I would say 90 days is a real good measure, but really it's six months. And in real reality, it's 12. Because it takes a lot of time to nurture some of these things. Even all the people that talk about online lead gen, like come in and have online lead gen. It doesn't matter. The conversion ratio of online lead gen is 2.5%. You gotta get 100 of them to convert to 2.5, two and a half. All right, and then the best people I've ever heard are like 11, 11%, which is like crushing it. But that's like random, like kind of random thing in Texas. But like most people are 2.5%. There was a small town, there was like a, a Waco, Texas. They, they did, they're a team that dominated Waco, Texas, and they converted 11% of their online leads. But they were like the, the, the team, and if you wanted to buy real estate, you just bought with them. 
I was like, actually, I feel like they're failing because it's like you're losing 90% because you're the only people that are there. You're like, the only people that are here. How are you losing 90%? Uh, but so, like, focus on your four things. If you put a schedule together, guys, be consistent and own it to yourself because no one, like, you're never going to work for my home. I say this all the time. You're never going to work for my home group. You can switch brokers day by day. No one ever works for the lot, so you definitely don't work for Nick Sperry, you definitely don't work for Justin. You are 100% working for yourself. So knowing what you are holding yourself accountable to, that these are my bare minimums, I do not go below this, and this is what I do every day. I, I was talking to this guy, I was telling him, I have been worn down because I haven't taken a vacation in like two years. And like, my, having a new baby, it's been seven months of grinding this, I've been doing this and doing this, and I like last week on Saturday after working for like six hours, I was like, I am about to pass out, and I still felt like that today, but I still wanted to come in here, and you guys make me feel better about my day because it feels like it's a win for me, because I see some people that hopefully will walk out with some things, and if you guys ever have questions, come in here and work from here, way better than working from home. You're so much more productive. I'm in the office around the corner. I'm the bathroom attendant. So you can always let me know. Where's the bathroom? Yeah, which bathroom? Can I have my combination of the code? Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions, provide any support. No ifs, ands, or buts. No catches or hooks or anything like that. We want to see everyone succeed regardless if you're with us or not. We want real estate to be successful, especially for my home group. They're a big partner of us. Um, and I think, too, once a week, I do classes. Oh, free classes. I do classes for the lot team. Um, every Thursday, so all those things that we talked to that I showed you out there, I do classes. You're more than welcome to jump yeah, in. Yeah, nine till ten on Thursdays. You guys yeah. can come whenever you want. There's no strings attached. Yeah. Um, we just teach classes. We want people to be successful. It's every every Thursday, every Thursday nine to ten here. Yeah. We, and then we do a team meeting, which you don't have to stay for. Um, here. Yeah. In this room, yeah. nine to ten a.m. Was that new? Uh, a couple weeks ago. We just started it like four weeks ago. Yeah. 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 No, we, we don't. No, we don't tell anybody about it. Uh, it's, we, we just do it because it's, like we it's, it's, tra it's training for our team, like but we class, offer it to anybody because it's class. we don't. It, it's going to be here anyway, so like it's a setting. Like I, so I come in and tomorrow. I'm doing same thing. So tomorrow, and then we do a team meeting, which yeah. obviously you don't have to stay for. Tomorrow so. night, ten. I'm doing uh, working with buyers. Next week it's going to be listing appointment. Yeah. Or I don't know if I'm doing Friday class anymore. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. But nine, tomorrow's nine, buying presentation. So I, if you don't, Justin right here used to be a teacher. Um, he quit because he wants to make more money. No, I think it's a little bit of purpose. Basically, I, so I've been working with a lot of team, and George, I've known George for 15, 20 years, um, and he had the idea of expanding years ago, a couple years ago, but he was worried about how do you, once you get quantity, you kind of sacrifice quality. Mm -hmm. well. So how can you do that? How can you protect your quality while you're ramping up inside? And he kind of approached me about taking on a bit of an education platform and try to build to kind of protect that quality of what we're trying to, that message that we want to put forward to brand, what is the lot team. Um, and that happened a few years ago. So um, I've been kind of working towards that. And then at a certain point, it got to the, where I, I feel like I want to impact people. I'm a teacher. Mm -hmm. I want to impact people, whether it's high school students, which I've done in the past, or I think 84% of realtors don't re-up their life income because they can't make wow. it. So when you think about that number, I think about 84% of those people, all those people that aren't able to, able to provide for their family. Or have spent money now in debt. Right, and that sucks. And I just, I think that's horrible. So if I can do something with tools necessary, and there's so many freaking tools, especially with the team that has a proven success, then if we can make it available to people, like God, let's help the people make some, provide for their family. Right? Yeah. Like that's how I look at it. It's not that's a financial awesome. thing to me, but um, so that's how I look at it. So that's why if you want to come on a Thursday. I don't, I don't care. No, we want. We're outside. Yeah. Like, we want okay. people, like, the outside sources is more than welcome. Yeah. It's, it's benefit, beneficial for us to improve the program yeah. too. So yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I gotta so, pick you, up the kids. Well, have fun. You have traffic. Enjoy traffic. Yeah, I know. I gotta try to beat the traffic. Can yeah. I go long? What time is it? Uh, it's forty. Three forty. 45. But you said late. 10 minutes. I only went 10 minutes over. Yeah. That's not bad. Oh, I was so lucky. What time is it? Yeah, I'll be on. Uh, uh, nice. Uh, yeah. Yep, 9 a.m. Yep, 9 a.m. Yeah. Nothing I know. Oh, man. <laughs>